Thanks for keeping us company the last three hours. It's time to hop into our fourth and final hour here of this week's Blades. John, take it away. All right. We still have some more downtime to do. We we also uh, need to uh, inflict heat on the crew here. No. <laughs> uh, inflict ice. Fortunate. Not the shadow run kind. So according to my tracker here, you guys had one, two, three, four, five heat. Yep. Um, this operation that just ended might be considered by some to be loud and chaotic. Some people might have that opinion, and I'm I'm one of those people. <laughs> there was only one lightning bolt. Come on. <laughs> Murdering people out on the street uh. inside of the blue coats. Yeah, you know. Um. I think I think that counts. Now that is one, two, three, four. That fills your heat again. Your back to your wanted level has returned. <laughs> the eel's prison stint gave you a, a brief reprieve, and now it's back. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you're gonna send him back in uh, to take the fall for you again. But first, before you can do that, we're gonna find out how they fared last time. If there are any eels left. To, to take the fall, or did they get ruined in prison? Uh, let's do that now. So, make a fortune roll equal to your tier, which is one. Uh, eels in the joint. Oof, that is a two. What does that mean? <laughs> That means there things are. badly for them. Uh, okay. On an incarceration roll for a PC, on a 1 to 3, your time in, inside is horrific. You suffer a level of trauma from the experience. NPCs don't have trauma. Um, they, just, they just get effed real hard. <laughs> the experience. Um, wow, choose your words, brother. Yeah, I know, right? It's phrasing. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that that's bad. I think I think what you've heard through the grapevine is that um, the eels the eels took the fall if you're a wanted level, and all of the all of the like demon hysteria in the city, um, all of the the killings that haven't caused the bells to ring, all of this general vibe of like there's some kind of dark force at work in the city the eels show up in prison and we're like they're like yeah we're those guys we're taking the heat for those guys that's who we are ha ha and <laughs> instead of being intimidated and like oh shit no one touched them when they were in prison everyone's like you gotta go <laughs> you're the worst so from what you've heard they there's they, they've been taken out essentially there's still a couple of them in iron hook um that have survived but uh, it's not good. The stories you've heard. You sent you sent those guys in to take the heat for you, and they got wrecked, and are not coming back out again in any way that can let them operate as a gang. So that's the end of them. They're done. Sorry, so yes. yeah, well, they were they were an ablative uh, <laughs> group. <laughs> essentially. All right. So back with one level. And I will do entanglements in a minute. Or, yeah, that's not good. That's one. Okay. Who else? Who else wants to do downtime stuff? We saw Rune um, healing Myth and having a chat with the Dimmer Sisters. Oh, um, we did that kind of off camera in the break. Um, so oh, yeah, sorry, we did. Myth took level three harm. Just so everyone knows, Myth took level three harm. Um, cohorts automatically heal one during downtime, and then I spent two coin to get him down to. No harm. So myth is good to go. Nice. And now I'm done. Uh, we can do mine real quick. I can't do anything. I have to do some ticks on the clock, I guess. So it's up to you how you want to do this. So you you owe the goddess four XP. Mm -hmm. um, you can you can pay that out of how, any XP you currently have, uh, or you can do two training sessions during downtime to to pay for it. Okay, so when you say XP, do you mean like currently I have one away from a full meter on prowess? I can just take four out of that? Right. Yep. 
Done. Boom. Nice. One, two, three, four. So I'll be down to one. Yeah. So yeah. So what 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 that's like is because she's bound with to you, um, in this way. You you feel like those memories flash before your eyes, careless. You're training. Um, some of the moments from that duel with the spirit warden, a particularly deft uh, strike with your with your blade, and you you feel that you feel that leaving you, like pouring out of a out of a cup and filling another cup. You sense somewhere in the city, dimly through the through the shadows of she who slays in darkness, an acolyte is head bent at an altar, communing with the goddess uh, for for power, and she she gifts some of careless firm's skills and, oh, and, and experience into them. And you, you, you feel them like learning to be a better fighter <laughs> because of your experiences. But I don't see them or anything. I just, you sense can't this. make out their face, but you, you sent, you know, they're in Duskwall and you know, they're like hidden, you know, they're at some, some hidden altar somewhere. Okay. Um, and it's, it's like the circle of life, right? Like you, you went and appealed to the goddess. Goddess, help me. Give me more power. This guy did the same thing, and this is how he's getting it. It's like transferring from you to him. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, would that be considered an action then? Uh, no, no, nope. Okay. That's, it's just a thing that happens. If you pay out of your current XP, then it doesn't take any time. You just you just do it. Okay. Then for one of my actions, I will indulge my vice. Because it's actually it's a six that I have on there, by the way, not four. I That's pushed it. myself or something. So oh, I'm right. Sorry, I missed you of your stress, my bad. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, so uh, no bonus dice, I don't think, right? None of my abilities give that, I don't believe. Um, yes, we, we give you, we've been giving you a bonus die uh, because you were bound fully to the goddess. And you oh. still are, yeah, her ire hasn't filled, so yeah. You still get that bonus oh, die. I crit. But... Crit. What does that do? <laughs> <laughs> on a, on a yes. vice roll? Yeah. So just, if I had a seven, it would have been all gone, I guess, is what happens. Uh, yeah, yeah. There, there's no official rule for critting on dice rolls, but everyone has, has house rules because they're like, there should be, it should do something on a crit. So, yeah, seven. It can do seven. Okay. Cool. And then for my other action, I will train um, resolve, I guess. So, two in there. Okay. Or, and just to clarify, I have level one harm concussion, yeah. but I have effects from that. Could I just get rid of that so that it doesn't? I guess that's what I should do, right? Is you should probably get rid of it. It doesn't. It doesn't affect you, but it's a it's a block of harm that you can't. Take, right? They can accumulate. It'll okay. accumulate. Yeah. So as I understand, I just have sex with all the girlfriend. Then is I guess what is that? <laughs> <laughs> the careless. <laughs> I'm just Pretty kidding. Sure. Sure. Uh, I just go to her and do I? What do I roll for? I've never actually healed. I've never had damage. <laughs> oh well, I mean, yeah, mm, I don't have to heal from wounds, and I'm careless for him. <laughs> uh, I, I I roll for Colin, uh, so. Oh okay. Roll her. She is an expert. Uh, three, one. That is only. That is one tick in your healing clock. Oh, and I need all four to get this out of here. Yeah. Okay. Yep. She 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 brews you some tea and uh, you feel a little better, but still concussed. I spend a coin to do it again. Let's do that. Uh huh. Yep. Take one coin away. Yep. And go ahead. And that's a crit. That's the rest of it. Gone. Nice. <laughs> a coin well You're spent. You're now an inch taller and that much more handsome as well, Jack. <laughs> well spent. Uh, that's it for me. Um, yeah, I have something to tell you about your downtime. Um, okay. Maybe let's let, let's do that last. Let's do other people's downtime, and then I'll okay. tell you because um, I, I think that will inform what happens next, probably. So let's I want see. you to tell me about the loot too when we get to that, or you can do it now, real yeah. quick. Yeah, Miss Cadaby or Aldo, you want to do some downtime? Go ahead, Cadaby. Uh, yeah, um, I think I am going to indulge Vice, and then I think I want to actually, uh, do my, uh, a roll to track down, uh, another Kotar artifact. 
Mm. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, something we haven't talked about because you guys are so regular with it. Uh, once you have trauma, if you don't indulge your vice during a downtime for some reason, you take stress equal to your trauma level. So um, it's right. It's kind of required once you have trauma. But uh, you're going to do some gambling. Uh, you know what? Actually, why don't I do my uh, acquiring so that I can actually maybe stress up a little more? Oh, you want to do the, your acquiring the gambling den thing or acquiring the... Uh, no, uh, yeah, the, the artifact. The artifact. Oh, and yeah. someone can produce heat as an action as well, I guess. If they yeah. have the action available. I have an extra. I could use calculating just to give us that if we want to. You don't actually have to. You don't have to reduce heat. Once you get your wanted level, it clears the heat, just like trauma. Uh, oh, okay. There's no, there's no heat to clear. It's an action to clear a wanted level then, I guess, right, John? The, no, clearing a wanted level requires incarceration. Sick. <laughs> Go to jail, Jeff. Someone can go to jail for a few weeks. Careless a- is a free bird. He doesn't belong in jail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so let me let me do uh, track down other Kotar artifact first. Yeah, so you you have a clock for that already, right, Marcos? Yeah, I do. It's it, it's two of a six segment. So how how do you want to do that? What's what's your method for searching for these things? And you can remove all the stress, by the way, John. Right. Well done. Um, I, I think, you know, if you, if you remember back to a few, uh, episodes ago where sort of I revealed my crazy den of, of connections as, as it relates to the artifacts. I mean, I think just like, I, I probably go into my room and I have this like list of contacts that I'm, I'm continuously sort of, um, uh, inquiring with just to, just to find out like which of my pieces are true. Um, you know, what, what's accurate. Um, so, uh, perhaps in this particular case, like I, I think I'm actually close to potential location and, th- and that's what I'm like trying to, to track down. So I'm going through my list of names. Nice. You've like crossed off the people that aren't going to work out and you're narrowing down on the, the likely person to approach to actually acquire the thing. Right. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. Cool. So I think you're studying, I guess. It sounds like you're studying your list of, of sure. People. Seems sure. like, seems like the right action for that. Um, and then can I push myself? You can. Okay. Push it real good. Push yourself. Okay. Pre- uh, more advanced strats from Marcus. And I assume this is controlled. Yeah, controlled and standard. It's yeah. it's essentially a, a <clears throat> long term project role, but that's the good way to do it in the in the interface. Okay. Oh my god. Threes for days. Triple nice. threes. Uh, which that makes is- it a success, right? Uh, with long term projects, you always make some progress. So you 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 tick one on your clock. You you never it have. Does connected affect it though? Like it's just. Bec- I see. So a greater success would have just let me tick more. Yes, yeah. connected doesn't Got apply it. to projects. Uh, okay. It applies to a bunch of stuff, but not to long. You get Got a participation it. trophy, Marcus. So. Yeah, yeah, yay! Yeah. You tried. <laughs> it was like just a dead end lead. So okay, one more cross off the list. Fair yeah. Enough. You, you do make some progress and you, you go through your, your potential contacts and weed out people that aren't going to be amenable to you. And, um, but yeah, it's not, okay. it's not a ton of progress. But yeah. All right. Now I wish to indulge my vice. Gotcha. Roll Gamb- it, bro. Gambling time. Yep. You roll that six. Yep. You got five. five That's stress. exactly what we had. Well, no, oh. I, got, I got four, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah, I got it. Great. You have one stress remaining. Nice. Perfect. Yep, we get a few quick shots. Nothing, nothing unusual happens to you this time around, Miss Cadaby. You're not, you're not accosted. There's no, uh, no drama. You just play some cards, have a nice evening, and, and de-stress in your, in your natural environment. Nice. Ship it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Aldo, you wanna, you wanna do the same? You need some de-stressing. Uh, yes, I do. Uh. <laughs> Let's see. First, I would like to. Um, well, let's let's do the de-stress first. And what I want to do is, um, in order to, because I want I want to cause harm on on uh, 
somebody that means means something in my background or whatever. So I want to go to wherever like the blue coat hangout bar is or tavern or whatever. Uh huh. And I want to just drink and like very slowly like sip, but pretend I'm just getting I start bad mouthing. Like the blue ma- the blue coats and shit like that, tell them they're hacks. They they did never do their job. They're never there when you need them. Like you know how you would you know, say about cops and whatever. Shit. Um, and wait for one of them to, uh, like off duty, of course, but wait for one of them to to try and stop me from mouthing off. Uh, yeah, blue coat bar. It's called the Six Arms. Okay. And you, you're you just going to loudly uh, badmouth blue coats until it comes to blows. Yeah, I mean, I'm not making it, like, subtle. I'm just, like, I'll say something like, yeah, by my aunt, she, uh, she was having trouble with a gang, and uh, the local authority didn't do anything about it at all. In fact, they blamed her for everything. But, you know, that's need to hit out there. <laughs> nice. Yeah, so this this escalates a little bit, and there's finally that moment where there's there's a table of scowling off-duty blue coats that are, like, egging each other on under their breath. Like, yeah, you teach this guy a lesson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Now, wait, wait, hang on. Wait, 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 wait. wait. And they, they, they're kind of waiting, and then their, <clears throat> their, their buddy comes in, so that now there's, like, say five of them they're like they're like waiting to have this huge advantage Um, Mm -hmm. and when they see they they've they've got this last dude uh kind of a hard look scarred faced blue coat hard looking dude uh and and you you've been escalating and saying worse and worse stuff and they're just like biding their time until finally um they come up behind you and they they try to like drag your coat down over your arms to pin your pin your arms down and then like uh, bouncer walk you out the door back through the back of the kitchen out into the alleyway um, to teach you a lesson. Uh, and they actually, they know you, right? Like you're, you're like a street criminal your whole life, you know? And they're like, yep. they're like, that's enough of that, Aldo. And they call you by name and yep. they take their smash your face against the wall and start, they jump on you and they're going to just kick you down, beat the crap out of you, teach you a lesson. Yep. And that's kind of kind of what I wanted because I feel like Aldo is still struggling with the guilt of that one blue coat duty he <laughs> very coldly took care of. Super cold blooded murdered. Yeah. 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 So, so it's kind of it's kind of like guilt. Like I want to get beat up a little bit. Right. Right. It's the uh, the other side of vice. The vice is all about like suffering and pain, and instead of inflicting it, you're you're taking it. Yep. Um, nice. Yeah. Blue they, coats haul him away to jail. <laughs> they, they could, uh, if Aldo speaks up and takes credit for something, the last word is done. Um, but otherwise, <laughs> otherwise, <laughs> nah, I might, I'm a lot of things, but I'm no snitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they're not, they're not, they're not investigators. They're not, they're not savvy enough to like put it together unless you say something. Um, There's an inspector working on the case somewhere, but that's not these guys. Right. Okay, so I indulge my vice. Yeah. Ugh. It is not as satisfying as you as you want. (sighs) Uh, Weird. Yeah. (laughs) And like they get all their they get their aggression out. um, But they haven't like really hurt you exactly. They've they've beaten you up, you know. But right, they sure. like specifically targeted you and like broken your hand or something. You know, you're just like cr- curled up in the in the alleyway, and they're they're like, yeah, I don't know what got into you, Aldo. But don't ever let us catch you talking like that again. And they're they're willing to leave. Um, yeah. If you want to drop a point of rep or something like to to indulge some more, like you could <laughs> you could say something that would bring them back <laughs> for more pummeling, but uh, otherwise. Do that's I get true. I get two downtime actions and I can spend a coin and get one more? Is that true? Yeah. All right. So I start. You see me on the ground like after after getting beat up, and you just hear him start. 
<laughs> and he calls out one of them by name. Oh shit. Okay. And he goes, uh, uh, well, give me, give me a name. Give me any name. Uh, Cyrus. There you go. <laughs> hey, Cyrus. I heard your mother was downtown getting tattoos earlier, but she didn't have any money to pay for them. So, uh, she was using her other talents to get what she needed. <laughs> she fucking sewed them scarves, didn't she? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> it went I think that, stitching. That speech, that speech is like, it goes like this. Cyrus, I heard your mother. And around, like, around mother, he's like kicking you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> and he doesn't really care what follows that. You're like saying the rest of it. And he's just like... Don't you say a word about my mom. He's just like stomping and stomping and stomping. <laughs> Watch you roll uh, one. You probably yeah, don't no shit, right? You probably don't want a devil's bargain here. I'll just say, if you want to yeah. uh, take harm, <laughs> actually get hurt from this, uh -huh. uh, give you a bonus die in your vice roll. But otherwise. Uh... No, I don't need a bonus die. I just want four. Yeah, I figured you didn't. But, but I, man, if I might overindulge too. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> God damn, dude! All right, fine. That'll be it. Good. I'll take. I'll just stick Man, with you. He's tough. This doesn't do much to him. Yeah. Yeah. Not much. Stress yeah, these guys don't hit hard enough. That's right. Yeah. They they get their they get their aggressions out. They're panting and like he's holding himself up against the wall. Like he's just expended all this energy and all those like basically okay. He looks uh, wholly <laughs> unsatisfied. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> De Devil's bargain. His mother actually shows up. <laughs> your ass. Uh, okay, you so this <laughs> this actually kind of ties into my next action. Um, I'm going to go to like after they're done, they leave me alone or whatever. I'm going to go to a local shop. I'm going to spend a coin um, to do another downtime action, but the coin is going to a um, a, uh, a a brooch, a nice brooch for um, uh, Kellen or Quellen. Quellen, uh huh. Yeah, Buy buying some some gifts for your lady friend. Yep, and then I'm gonna go to her. I'm all beaten up and bruised, and I show her the 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 shotgun pellet blast that I still have <laughs> and stuff like that. And I I give it to her very sheepishly. I'm like, yeah, I know you don't have to say it. I look like hell. Can you uh, can you fix me up again? Oh, Aldo, she like strokes <laughs> strokes your face and like kind of. She's being sweet, but she's also like a healer, and so she she like pinches one of your cuts and like just kind of painfully like inspects it, you know, <laughs> <laughs> kind of makes you wince. And, you know, she's like, ah, <sighs> you know, I guess I'm just gonna have to get used to this. Well, yeah. I hope you know what you were getting into. She sits you down and she gets out her, her sewing kit and she get, she gives you some mushrooms to eat. Uh, and she starts starts sewing up your, your wound and very non, nonchalantly she's like, so um, have you, uh, you talked to Rune uh, lately? <laughs> uh, what? Three ticks on your healing clock, Aldo. Thank you. Ooh, nice roll. Yeah. But what's it for? You uh, talk to talk to Rune lately? Uh, I talked to her quite a bit. Why do you ask? Oh, no reason. I just, you know, she wasn't around. I uh, wasn't sure if um, everything was okay. If uh... It's, you know, I just, I just, I was just curious. Um, uh, what, what did she say? She, oh, she, I, she didn't say anything. Um, Come on now, love. You can tell me it's all right. I won't get mad at anything. If there's something wrong. No, it's, nothing's wrong. It's just, 
I mean, things are, I didn't, they're just complicated. I didn't really, <sighs> okay, okay. Let me start over. You know, like, I, I'm Rune's friend. We've been friends for a long time. And I help my friends when they get banged up. Right. But she's not, like, my only friend. You know, I have other friends who need my help. And I help them, too. And, I mean, they help me out when I need help. Right. And I... <sighs> Let me... Stop. I'm in another angle. Let me stop you right there. Whatever you do on your own time is your business. Well, I, I don't come in here and tell you what I do. It might turn your stomach. And you might not want to see me anymore. No one wants that, right? And he tries to make, make a big smile like, right? So... If you do stuff that maybe you're not very proud of when I'm not around, it makes no never mind to me. I just want to know that you're happy and you're safe. Are you? Oh, dude. Um, yeah, make a consort roll, Zeke. <laughs> oh man, are you sure? Take a consort, bonus consort. I have a zero. There's no. It's just fortune. It's there's no risk here. You you said something that could tip her over, and I don't know if she will be tipped. We're gonna find okay. out. Uh, control standard consort three. A three. All right. She's not tipped. She has a look of, like, not anguish. She like, has a look of, like, mm, discomfort on her face. And then she smiles and she, like, snips the last bit of the stitch uh, on your wound and holds your face in her hands. You're, like, sitting on, on the bed and she's standing in front of you. She's like, I really appreciate that, although. It's really nice to know that you trust me. And I trust you. Oh, wait. Oh, shit. You're right, chat. Sorry. What oh, was your bonus die? Yeah, yeah, you got a bonus die. Uh, so that, the four counts. Oh, you're you right. gave me a bonus die. How come? Yeah. Uh, because because she's your lover. Oh, okay, cool. Okay. Then, yeah, right. you take the first dice, be a four. Okay. I was just reading reading what it told me. You're right. She had a bonus die. Cool. Uh, in that case, she, she does. She says what she said. She said, uh, I'm so glad that you trust me. Mm -hmm. so I'm going to trust you. This other gang, they're called the Blood Letters. You've heard of them, Aldo. You've heard, like, they're yeah. murderers who are into weird, dark magic stuff. Well, I know them as drug dealers, personally, but... Yeah, that too. <laughs> yeah. So she says that and kind of, like, waits to see how you react when she drops the name. And as soon as she, like, hesitates, I go, Are you in some kind of trouble with them? They're not the kind of people you want to be in trouble with. They're in a lot of trouble. I guess I am too. <laughs> it's demon stuff, all though. She like she leans down real close to you, and she's like, <sighs> like careless, like. Everywhere I go, there's fucking demons. It seems like you can't swing a stick without hitting a demon or two, right? It's not really... I try to stay out of that stuff. I, I'm a healer. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. But with them and now with you guys, I feel like, I don't know. Ugh. Sometimes I feel like I'm cursed. What's the problem? 
I may have an old, old friend who may be able to help. I don't know if he would, but he might. I don't really know. I just know I've heard the name <clears throat> Demon. She like looks around the dark corners of the room, you know, like kind of superstitiously. That's Satara. What can I do to help? Uh, I don't think she expected that reaction. <laughs> um, I don't think she has a thing like on the top of her head to be like, well, do this. She's just like, I don't know. I don't know. Ugh. It's a mess. It's mm -hmm. just a mess. <sighs> Are you in any kind of danger? <sighs> of course. I think we're all in danger. Well, yeah, besides living in this city, of course, you know, everybody's in danger. I mean, you could get struck by a fucking bolt of lightning out of nowhere. That's not what I mean. <laughs> but they're my friends, though. Like, you, she's starting to say, like, you, I mean, not like you, although, you know what I mean. I don't know. I don't want well, anything bad to happen to any of you. No, I understand. Here's my promise. <clears throat> I'll let you tell me when it's time for me to step in. Okay? Because okay. I don't want to make the situation worse if okay. I don't, if I, if I would. I don't want to make the situation worse for you. So... If you need me, I'm always around. All right? Just tell any of the, you see those little little, uh, little boys wandering around. They look like the beggars or whatever. Most of them know someone older and so on and so forth. And uh, word will get back to me if you need me right away. Okay, it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. I'll. I'm gonna talk to them. I'll talk to them. All right. Now yep. I trust you. You can handle yourself. I know that. But if you need a big, ugly guy with giant fish to pound someone, I think I know a guy. She, she strokes her face again and, like, shakes her head when you say, like, big ugly guy. And she kisses you and she's just, she's relieved. Like, the conversation went okay. You didn't freak out. You put the ball in her court so she can decide how to handle it. So she's, I think that's where we leave the scene there. She's just like, oh. Cool. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Cool. Nice. Wow. Okay. I, I really didn't know how that was going to go. That was that was very sweet. Although, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> uh, cool. Well, let's let's cut back to your thing, Jeff. I think um, when you go to indulge your vice, an, an important thing happens. So um, let's let's do that before we run out sure. of time for this session. Uh, don't want to screw YouTube that hard. Um, so. You uh, indulge your vice in the basement of the Cathedral of the Church of Ecstasy, as we've established in the past. Um, you've been you were given this this uh, ritual space where you uh, desecrate the bodies of hollows in um, a special way that is for the glorification of the goddess. Um, and this has been going on for a while now, for the whole time you've been in Duskwall, pretty much. Um, this time when you go to indulge your vice, um, as you're leaving, you are intercepted by a church official. Okay. Who you know. Uh, where did I write his name? One moment. Uh... 
should have been looking this up, but I was talking to Zeke. I will I will figure out his name in a second. Um, so it's it's the guy who uh, lets you use the space. Um, okay. He's a he's a member of the church. Uh, kind of a, a lower ranking. Ah, here he is. Seeker Cavell is his name. Uh, he knows you. You know him. Um, but he's not by himself this time. He is with uh, two other people. Um, two, both men. They're, they're, these are all men. Um, the seeker. He's wearing his modest uh, church seeker robes. Um, he's with an adept who you don't recognize. An older man wearing somewhat fancier church robes with gold trim. And he is with a even fancier <laughs> looking church official, a preceptor. Preceptor is the one of the highest ranks in, in the church. Um, and uh, Secret Cavell like humbly kind of like intercepts you. Clearly he's like with his bosses, you know? Yeah. Uh, and he says, ah, Mr. Firm, I, I, I'm so, I'm so glad I was able to find you. Um, this is uh, this is Adept Caro and Preceptor Dunville. Uh, they would uh, very much like a word with you. Uh, it's uh, it's a great honor, as you might imagine. Um, and you you recognize the name, Jeff. You recognize that Preceptor Dunville is on on the hit list. Uh, in fact, oh, I'll, I'll bring up the hit list here so we can see it. Uh, he's over there on the left. He kind of looks like Evil Jim Carrey. He's that guy. Uh, <laughs> And what Salia told you about him is that he is a member of the Circle of Flame who has infiltrated the Church of Ecstasy undercover. <laughs> okay, I think uh, <laughs> typical careless firm, like he, upon <clears throat> he's like rolling down his sleeves and kind of adjusting his jacket. Um, he's cleaning up after you know the gruesome mess, and he introduces these people, and careless like smiles and reaches out and. Careless firm, so nice to meet you. And he like looks at the other guy, and then with uh, with uh, preceptor Dunville, he looks at him and takes his other hand and puts it over his hand as he's shaking him, and it's like, and it's especially nice to meet you. You are such an accomplished man. It's it's a huge honor to finally have met you in this church. You've risen up so fast, ascended even. <laughs> Cute, cute. Uh, yeah. So Car Caro like is a bit put off by your demeanor, you know, but he he, he doesn't hide it very well. Um, I guess he sh he sort of shakes, and uh, Cavell is is a little like aghast that you're doing this, but Dumville just smiles that smarmy kind of smile that he has in the image here, um, sort of smirk, uh, and and he shakes your hand. And he says, "Yes, it." Both of us, I believe, are rising rather rapidly, aren't we, Mr. Farm? And he, and he actually looks around and says, I've recently heard a saying, it's something along the lines, and now I'm not a nautical man myself, but as I understand it, ships rise the tide for everyone, and which brings great fishing. So, <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> that was so yeah. masterfully <laughs> butchered. <laughs> Cavell like actually like visibly pales and and like looks nervously back and forth at his boss is like oh god oh god this is not this is not going well uh, but D Dunville just smiles and says yes yes indeed it does come let's have a word and he he gestures so there's this like winding spiral staircase that goes down below the cathedral and there are these chambers off of it. It's this stone, dark, you know, lit by torches, ever deeper below the earth. And you have one of these chambers that you use. Okay. Uh, and they gesture further down um, to another chamber. And, and they, they go in. And at, as you're approaching it, you, you smell like the cana like canal water smell, that sort of dirty, um, fetid water smell. Torches are burning inside, flickering lights. <laughs> And as you as you peek your head through and they they walk through, they are here arrayed in this chamber. It's like the chamber that you use, um, arched stone ceiling, smooth plaster walls, and a, a fireplace on one one end. They have strung up in here all of the hollows that you've ever 
desecrated, including the ones that were disposed of in the canal that are dripping. Um, some of them dismembered. They've, they've been collected, all the previous uh, bodies. And they're in a disturbingly accurate order, uh, not according just to chronology, but like someone who clearly understands the markings left on them has mm. arranged them in the proper ritualistic way. Uh, they, they can read uh, the, the, the language of butchery that you <laughs> indulge in, so, so to speak. Um, and Cavell, as you're getting closer, Cavell looks at you with this look like, this is really good. Like, <laughs> oh man, you're, you're about to get super lucky. You don't even know. Um, you come in and Dunville sort of takes a step to the side and expects that his, his underling adept Caro to take the lead. And, and Caro gestures and says, Mr. Firm, we are very impressed with your work. This is something truly special. Unfortunately, Seeker Cavell, and Cavell like, so, like it has been tr caught all of a sudden, like he didn't realize this was going to happen. He steps back. Unfortunately, Seeker Cavell did not inform us of your very important work here. Some of your better pieces, I'm afraid, were damaged when they were discarded, which they should not have been. And Cavell like, puts his head down and is like, oh shit, they're blaming it on me. Very important work indeed. And Caro, you can see right through him, like he has no fucking clue what this is about or what it means. He's, act he's acting like he does for the sake of his boss. Um, and he's trying real hard to lead you into saying something important about it because he doesn't know. It's like uh, y y y there's a person who you, f you forgot their name and you're <laughs> like trying mm -hmm. to introduce them to someone like this. And this, uh, this person who will say their name now to you that I was supposed to know, but I forgot. Am I kind of picking up the vibe then that they want me to tell them what this is about type of thing? Caro wants to, you to say something because he's at sea and he wants to look like he knows stuff in front of Dunville. Dunville clearly knows what's going on here and that this is uh, ritualistic stuff for the goddess. And he's maybe has some insights because the way he's arranged the stuff, like he's doing something with the bodies himself. There's some kind of ritualistic practice that he's using them for. Um, and it's a little bit out of your league, honestly, like right. you're bound to the goddess and you get her that way. But like in a scholarly sense, like he clearly knows something, uh, that's like a little unclear, but Caro's here just as an intermediary. And he, he wants, he wants someone to reveal something interesting about this. So he doesn't look like an <laughs> idiot. Uh, <laughs> in the circle of flame, we understand them with this lineage, this line, they're, they work with the ghosts, basically, the, the powerful ghosts. That's our yeah. theory. That's that, yeah, that is definitely your theory. They, they are very into ancient um, artifacts, ancient magic and sorceries, any, anything from the past uh, that's powerful. They, they try to unearth it. It's like uh, evil antiquarians, you know, that <clears throat> want to use ancient powers to, to rule the world kind of thing. Okay. Nazi era occult, maybe. Yeah, that's a good. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Like the, the cult in Hellboy at the beginning, the, like Rasputin and all of them are like trying to open a portal and that's total circle of flame kind of stuff. Okay. I kind of, so there's a, it's a funny mix then here because I'm recognizing this guy's doing something that I don't fully understand. Mm -hmm. They don't understand what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, one guy's pretty obviously wanting to portray that he does know what's going on, but doesn't, and is leading me to try to explain it. So Careless just kind of takes a moment, looks around them to apprise the situation, kind of steeples his fingers and says, well, it's interesting to see it all lined up like this. It really kind of puts it into perspective. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what, I was, I have to say, this has been happening quite often, more often. It just means there's great times ahead. There's a convergence of fortune occurring right now. I was just going to bring in one of my acolytes, Rune, a spitball of a young lady. She can light up people like you've never seen before. Almost literally. Now, <laughs> I feel that with this 
arrangement of the work, this is probably one of the best times to try and to get her in here to show her what we're really about. And of course, you all understand. He doesn't wait for them to answer. Just, so I will do that. Um, there'll be another person here, just not to alarm you all. But I am really excited about this. This is great. We are doing good work. As you can imagine, this is all contributing, of course, to the transference of our existence into demonhood, and that's where we're trying to go with this. But by aligning the bodies in chronological, and it would appear even artistic order, which is great. I would think the bodies would decay over time and erode the work that I did, but I've seen you perceive you've kind of mummified them in a way that's fantastic. This is all great. They Yes, they have, actually. Um, yeah, so Caro is like stepping over your words a little bit like you're, you're starting to say something and he says well i mean another person would yes that would be required at least one uh for something and the mummification of course yes we are quite proud of how we've uh have we achieved that um as as if he knows you know he's like trying to keep up with you and you talk him into a corner basically like he has to kind of just go along with it and you're like yes mm -hmm. yes another 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 acolyte, this rune, yes. And he's like looking out of the corner of his eye at Dunville, and Dunville's just just looking at you. Just like he doesn't care about all this drama. Yeah. He's just trying real hard to like pick up on something or get something out of you. He's studying you, is what he's doing. Um, and this is the first I've seen of Dunville, right? Yeah. Yeah. You've heard his name, but you've never seen him before. And I know him and I understand his rank and stuff. So before I ask the question, would would I is it common knowledge that he would be like in this church or is he visiting type of thing is this like the revelation that he is here this is the this is like the biggest um cathedral place for of worship in the city he okay. probably he probably has offices in white crown across the channel like in some fancy okay. building thing but yeah he he's visiting in the sense that he probably doesn't live or work here but this is this is the chief uh place of worship for the church so I think the whole conversation, like Carolus is also just looking at him, uh, saying this to the group, but only looking at him. And he kind of says, he says, uh, I really, I would be, frankly, I would be disappointed with myself if I did not, again, take this opportunity to four birds and one stone it, as they say. Mr. Dunville, now that you're in town, if I could set up an appointment for my acolyte to meet up with you, because... If we're really going to make people into demons and have that ascension occur, we need to cram as many great minds into one room as we possibly can. Now, she's a little bit of my expert on this kind of area. You, of course, you're a dazzling star. I've heard of your legend. You're, you're one of the best. I would like the three of us to meet here to talk about how we can best really make people into demons. Just get them shot straight up there into demonhood and get them out in the world. And of course, <coughs> something that we all want quite a bit of. And it starts here. Uh, how about how about a consort role, Jeff? Or sway? Could if be, I could take I... sway, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> we... I do not blame. I think if you're you're trying to get him to do something, uh, yeah. so sway makes sense. Yeah, you're not you're not just fitting in. So yeah, okay. And then give me the parameters. Please. Sway, uh, it's risky, okay. uh, and it is limited effect. Limited effect. Well, I'm I'm just gonna straight roll it. No pushing here. We'll see what the dice say. We're getting I think uh, five. All right. He he narrows his eyes uh, as you're as you're saying all this, and um, Caro is is nodding like this all is making sense to him, and he totally yeah yeah mm -hmm, yep 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 good idea. And then when you're done, Dunvol says he looks at you, but he's speaking to Caro. He says, "You see." These, these are the type of people that we need in the church, adept. And and Carl like takes that as kind of a threat or something, and he's like, uh, 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 well, we all, we all, all of us, um, do we do our best? Uh, we do our best, preceptor. Uh, each, each and every one of us ought to, according to his uh, uh, means. 
Yes. Yes, Mr. Firm, we should meet this rune that you speak of. He says it kind of like, yeah, I already know. <laughs> I know about <laughs> rune. Um, but he's, he's, he pretends, you know, this rune person. You should. You should meet indeed. I think the next time I'm here, we will have made some progress and you and rune and whatever other associates you feel necessary. Uh, he takes his hands and kind of puts them behind his back, looking at him, smiling, and says, Oh, yes, there, we could, sure. I could dig up some other people, but the Acolyte, that's the one I really want us to meet up with. And he's kind of like looking around, and he sees the conversations kind of coming to an end. He's like, well, time really is always of the essence for me. I have so many things to do, so many plans to just kind of hatch out of my mind, but... And he like uh, starts to kind of put his jacket on, and he says, oh, "Actually, uh, there's one more thing, Dunville. It, I've under now. You'll have to understand. I don't understand how people feel about things, but I've come to recently learn it's polite to ask. How do you feel about dogs? Are you a dog person? <laughs> no, you're not a dog person. Fair enough. I will remind my acolyte then to keep her dog on a tight leash. It sometimes gets out of it." I will be seeing you guys all very soon. Dunville will have our people talk and set up that meeting. It'll be wonderful. He turns and walks away. <laughs> nice. Yeah, as, as you you're go up the long staircase and as you're leaving, Cavell breathlessly catches up with you uh, and, and delivers you a date. Like he's been sent as an errand boy. Like, you know, tell them to come uh, in a week or, you know, whatever. Um, you, you're, he, he gives you a specific day that Dunville wants to have this meeting uh, in the basement of the church. Very good. He takes it, nods, and just kind of keeps... He that doesn't break stride, just keeps going. Yeah. yeah. All right, cool. That's That will do it for this episode, episode 16. Uh, we have kind of run out of time for XP, I think. Maybe we should do that next time. Uh, yeah. And yep. we, will, we will cut here and do some shout-out. <laughs> Great. Uh, let's run through them real quick, uh, starting with Jeff. Uh, just thanks, as always, everyone, for tuning in. Appreciate it. Um, this is, uh, as we've always, you know, we just kind of keep saying, it's a highlight of the week for me, so I just had a really looking forward to it, good time. I uh, was honestly very scared of that first roll. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> so many things with, uh, with blades, it, it works out in the end. Um, for me personally, this next week we are going to have another show of Fanboys on Tuesday. You should check it out. It's on Twitch TV slash, well, twitch.tv slash Twitch. Uh, it's Tuesdays at 1 p.m. We're going to have my buddy John Mess on there. He's the one of the lead vocalists for Dance Gavin Dance and just an all-around great guy. Really funny, but he loves his nerd culture and stuff, so I think he'll be a good guest. Um, and then for me personally, I will be streaming some Dawn of War 3 today and maybe tomorrow. I think it still is going on tomorrow. And Anna's back home, so we'll get up another stream or two or however many it takes to literally repopulate the world with our children uh, in <laughs> Crusader Kings 2 until we own the Roman Empire in Germany and France. Uh, Gormgus is currently, that's our son, he is married to his... <laughs> Yeah, that's the name they gave us too. It's Gormgus. Uh, <laughs> he rain, by the way, and he's doing a great job. He really is. Uh, his wife. There were some doubts there for a minute, but then he gave her some money, and she loves him now. You can't make this stuff up. Um, what else? That's about it for now. Honestly, um, there's a couple announcements this coming week that you guys should all keep your eyes on the twitters and whatnot that are really really fun and. Uh, pertaining to content and, and good stuff. So obviously announcement, announcement for the eSport people that want to get mad at me or whatever, but uh, <laughs> it's fine. Just cool stuff coming, so thank you. They're all angry right now. So angry. Uh, Zeke! Yo! Shout outs. What's up, everybody? Ezekiel the Third here. You can find me on Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube, all at Ezekiel underscore III. Uh, variety broadcaster, uh, usually start at noon Pacific, Every day that I'm not doing one of these shows, <clears throat> want to thank uh, Ann, Wheat, Jeff, John, JP, as usual. Uh, uh, this was a great show. 
today. Yeah. I had a lot of fun. I think everybody had their chance in the spotlight, and, and uh, I really, really appreciate, and I'm grateful to, to be a part of this. Uh, tomorrow is uh, Indie, Indie Sunday on a Monday. We're doing Indie Games all day tomorrow, starting at noon Pacific. I've got a few picked out and looking for a couple more um, through the Steam logs, and uh, that uh, starts at noon. I already said that. That's all I got, so see you tomorrow, maybe. Thanks, Zeke. Anne. Yes. Uh, another out. great show. Thank you guys so much for being here. And thanks to everyone on the crew, of course, and JP for running everything. Um, because of my internet being a little bit goofy, uh, well, normally I don't stream on Sundays, so I won't be streaming after this. I might try and stream tomorrow. I know that it's like I'm assuming that at 5 p.m. on the dot, my internet's going to go down. So <laughs> I, I might try and stream from like noon to 4 uh, and I have another tech coming out tomorrow anyway, so I'm not sure. I'll just let you guys know on Twitter, uh, ammunition on Twitch, Twitter, all that stuff. I definitely won't be streaming on Tuesday, but I hope to maybe see you guys tomorrow because I don't, I don't like going two days in a row without streaming. That's stupid. So maybe tomorrow. Thanks. Good luck with your interwebs. Uh, you. John, shout outs. Yes. Great session. You guys had a lot of fun as always. Uh, we will be doing the post show, I believe. Uh, and for those of you who are curious, um, what would have happened if Jeff had rolled a one to three on his consort roll, I will tell you in the post show <laughs> the thing that he avoided. <laughs> mm. Curious about the stakes there. We can go over that. Um, yeah, uh, this week I, I was not able to stream last week. I'm trying to uh, do some do some video game plan on Twitch. So last week didn't work out. This week, hopefully, I will be able to do it uh, with some Hollow Knight. So I will tweet about that when that when that actually happens. Hopefully, uh, maybe on Tuesday, I'll be doing that. So awesome! Come and check it out. Oh, awesome. and sorry, one more thing. Uh, Blades is back on Drive Through. We are back at number two. Uh, we're fought, fighting for that top spot <laughs> still. <laughs> um, so I wanted to shout out to everybody for who's still supporting the game. And just keeping us up in the top uh, sales ranks there. It's super cool. And I'm, I'm just really, really thrilled. Uh, thank you guys so much for being so loyal and supporting the game so much. It's great. Awesome. Thank you, John. Uh, and uh, me, I'm DJ Wheat. Uh, you know where to find me. Um, I, I, if, I, if I have anything to talk about this week, uh, we released our first mini documentary called Iron Sights on Friday. Um, it is about the game of Big Buck Hunter and the uh, some of the people that play it. Uh, you can check it out on link.twitch.tv slash ironsights if you haven't already. It's about 22 minutes long. Would love to hear what you think. Uh, other than that, thanks for joining us on a Sunday. I, 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 I do like the new time. Uh, helps out uh, a lot, but hopefully you guys uh, and gals are enjoying it as well. So that's all I got. Uh, thank you. And thank you to the entire Blades cast. We'll be back here next Sunday, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Indeed. Yep. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks for joining us for another night or day <clears throat> or afternoon of killing. We'll be back next Sunday with another episode of Blades here on Roleplay. Uh, that's it from us. We'll see you next time. Peace.